Hi, this is Adam with Maker Studio. I'm excited to have another review for you today. This time it's the Roboblock uh, Kobo robot. Uh, we were able to see this uh, during one of our recent trips to China, and I'm really excited to take a deeper look and show you what it is. So the first thing in the box is a guide. It feels like a pretty hefty guide. And it's all in English and it looks like there's various lessons that are included. Looks like a pretty solid guide there. And there's QR code in, on the inside if you need uh, different languages. And the first thing we see is a cable, which is not very exciting, but probably necessary to charge and to connect to the robot. And then we see this cute little robot here. Um, so I think it's a snail and it's got a, a white face with a little smile on it and two bulgy eyes. And then um, on the shell of it, it has a couple what look like little Lego nubs on the top. Uh, I believe you can use that to connect to Lego pieces. Uh, it's got a speaker output on the back side there, a button on the top that I'm assuming is related to uh, the functions that it will do, a USB charging port in the back, and then on the bottom it looks like a power button and some of the wheels that are uh, connected to the motors to make it go. But it's nice and light, but seems pretty, pretty solid and durable, I would assume. So when we take the plastic insert out. We get into the inside here and I believe this is the this is the mat that you see in the book. Um, so it is a play mat that is quite large and has different features from around the world and is a grid pattern. Um, and I believe you can use this to have your kids investigate different uh, patterns, uh, different places around the world and they can travel different patterns to get there based on challenges that you set for them. Uh, there's a little insert for other robots and uh, they're asking about reviews. They seem very keen on getting reviews uh, from, from users uh, and our sense in meeting them was that they're very interested in making their product better. Uh, so I think that that's a, uh, a great thing and I think they're serious when they ask for feedback. And then the other pieces in here are cards. And there's two sets, and I believe there are something like 30 cards in here, um, and um, the cards can be used to uh, set, the, set the robot up to program. So you can put Kobo on the cards, and set the cards out in a pattern or a program that you want Kobo to run on, and then Kobo will run on those cards uh, and do the, the moves or the programming procedures that are uh, seen on the cards and, uh, and then get from the starting point, uh, which is this block, to the ending point, which is, uh, I believe it's always set up as this diamond. So the gem is the end point. So there is a start card and an end card, a couple end cards. There are color cards, which will, I believe this interior part of the robot is a light and it will change colors based on the light card that it passes over. Um, on the back of those light cards, there is a standard forward arrow 
And those can be used to move the robot forward one card. So there's a variety of different colors, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, blue, and violet. So it looks like you've got the rainbow there. Um, then the next card I see is a dance card. And on the, on the one side there's a somebody with pom-poms. And on the back side, I guess it's Kobo with uh, more of a hula outfit or something like that, although it's got maracas. And so I'm assuming those are two different types of dance maneuvers that are available there. Then it looks like there's another similarly colored card that has a siren on one side and a police car, and then a train on the other side. So I'm assuming that it will uh, play those sounds. And then it looks like there are some loop cards. I think this comes in when we want to uh, program the robot, which is another cool feature that I'll show you, uh, where you can set the, the robot into programming mode, and then you can go through a sequence that you want it to do, and then let it go, and it will play itself. It will, it will sort of go through that sequence, that program, uh, without having to run over the cards. And so these loop cards come in handy there. And one way you can tell that is they don't have the notch to fit into the other cards. And so uh, that's where they're, they're not used when you're actually building the program with, with these cards. Uh, then as you would expect, there is a turn left and a turn right so that you can get the robot to move and turn in either direction. There are a couple of those. And then there are water features. And I believe from what I've seen that these water features, there's two of these, are uh, things that you would want the uh, Kobo to avoid. And they can be used to set up uh, the pathway so that uh, kids would have to move their robot and avoid these. There is another card and on one side it has where Kobo needs your help to move forward one space. So I believe when it gets to this it stops and you need to move it forward one space. And then on the flip side of that card it's a request by Kobo to touch it on the face. So it's a sort of sensory input uh, and I believe it needs to have that happen before it will continue on with the rest of the program. Ooh, exciting. Then there is a conditional card and it looks like I think both sides are the same. It looks like there is an apple and a banana and based on the choice, Kobo will go uh, and follow the direction of the banana or the direction of the apple. So I believe that you need to, to indicate that somewhere. Right. And then um, there's another card that has a, a cube on there with an apple and a banana. And that is meant to be a random selection, so it will randomly pick one or the other, and then when it gets to the conditional card, it makes the choice for the banana or for the apple based on the random card pick. And then there are two other cards that are not random selections, but one is an, a banana and one is an apple. And these can be used so that when it gets to the conditional card, you can make it go to the right or to the left based on the fruit that you selected or, or gave to the Kobo previously. So those are all the cards. There's one more, and this is another start card, but like the loop cards, there's no puzzle piece fit here, and so this indicates that this is the start card for the uh, programming. And so you would need to use this to indicate to Kobo that you are, that this is the start, the first move in the programming sequence that you're setting it up, 
And then you can use the other cards to indicate the pattern you want it to follow. And then uh, you can use that diamond card from before to end the sequence. So I have not turned on Kobo yet and I've not charged it, but let's see if it comes with a charge that we can play with. So a nice cute voice, some nice bright colors. I like the see-through area on the side where you can, uh, it's translucent and you can see the colors being created by the, the LEDs inside or the lights inside. And so let's see if we put Kobo down and we put some of the blocks away and I face him toward you. Okay, it says no code to run. So I'm assuming we need to set it up with the code. So I have a finished card here. I'll just do something simple just to see how it goes. And let's see what we can do. Oops, must be reminding me to do something here. So I'm going to set up a little pattern here and then I'll describe it to you. I need my other start card. It's an eager little bugger. It wants to play. So let's give it a chance. So I've got a, a start card here. Wow, yeehaw. So I will put that down first. I then have a forward arrow. Connect those two. I have a touch card <laughs> where we need to touch Kobo's face. And then I have a uh, gem or diamond card here to finish it off. And I'm going to place it on the start card. And it knows it's in game mode. And yeah, it is now showing in green color. And I hit go. It goes forward one step. Okay, so I need to touch its face. It giggles. And then it moves forward and gives me a nice warm feeling with the, with the celebration there. So let's add a little bit more complexity. So we're gonna do a start card. I'll move this for now. We're going to do turn left. And then a straight. And then a turn right. And let's get a little Music in here, we'll do a train. And then... Please place me on the start card first. Yep, Kobo, I'll be with you in a minute. And then it wants to go, we'll go forward one, and then the finish card. So we'll try this as version two. And, and there are different versions of this uh, called out in the guidebook. So I'm just playing here to show you what it will what it does. So again, when you put it on there, it knows it's in game mode. When we hit the go button on the top. Let's go! Turn left. Forward. Turn right. Turn left. So that's a, a basic walkthrough of the game mode. Uh, and uh, next I'll show you the, the programming mode. Okay, so let's take a look at
the programming mode. I've got a start card there, and I believe when I place Kobo on that start card, it knows that it's in programming or free mode. And so the next card, as I start tapping it on different cards, it will then follow that sequence. So I will tap it on the forward card, and I'll do that twice, and then I'll do turn right, and then another forward, and then I'm going to have it do the move card, where it will jump one step, and then let's just do a simple finish card. Okay. So, I press, put it down and press the go button. It's now done the two forwards. Turning right. Going forward one. So I'm going to move it forward one step, and I'm going to actually move it backwards so it doesn't fall, and then it gets to the finish line. So that is one of the programming modes, and so that gives you a basic overview. Uh, I will not show you in this video, but we'll hopefully do an another one in the future, that you can connect Kobo to a computer, and you can use a basic programming software that they have available Goodbye. to Goodbye Kobo uh, to set up a program and it looks very similar to these cards but you can set it up with uh, a little bit more specificity so you can uh, change the number of steps you want to make, you can change the angle at which it turns uh, and you can do a couple things like that and so um, I think that is a nice uh, addition for sort of the next level for some kids who are eager to do more with Kobo. Um, and I believe that the company is also thinking about uh, producing some more cards that would allow it to play uh, more music and give it a, ver a little bit more options in terms of what it does and maybe the words that it says. So that's our basic review for the Kobo. Uh, it seems like it's a really nice intro to programming for young kids. Um, and based on what the company told us, it seems like they're continuing to, to grow the options for this. And I think it, it, it's got great potential uh, compared to some of the other basic robots that kids are playing with. All right. Until next time. Thank you.